In this episode, I tell you about moving away from my favorite task app, I share some information about the upcoming solar eclipse, and I let you know what I've been up to and why I put the podcast on hiatus. Yep, I know it's been a while, but I'm happy to say once again, welcome to Blog Oklahoma. When you have all sorts of projects you need to work on, having a good to-do list is a must. It helps keep you organized, keeps track of what you're working on, and when you should be working on it. For me, that's a service called Wonderlist. It's a cross-platform utility to help manage your tasks. Wonderlist can handle anything from a simple shopping list to a collaborative project with subtasks, notes, and file sharing. I can honestly say I've been using Wonderlist every day since I first started using it some six years ago. I have watched Wonderlist grow from a simple to-do list app to an integrated multi-platform power project management tool. And I'm not the only one who liked Wonderlist. Just search through all the tech blogs who did articles on reviewing task management apps. You will often find Wonderlist was at the top of many of their lists. Back in June of 2015, the company behind Wonderlist was acquired by the tech giant Microsoft. The future looked great for the service. Soon came a good Windows app and integration into Microsoft Outlook. It was beginning to look like Wonderlist could be integrated into the Microsoft Office suite in some way. Alas, that didn't happen. Soon came news, Microsoft is retiring Wonderlist in favor of an unimaginatively named Microsoft To-Do. As of right now, you can use a preview of Microsoft To-Do. Though functional, it's currently no wonder list. It's a very simple to-do list. It's kind of generic, and honestly, I don't think it looks very good. They made a lot of UI choices that just don't make a lot of sense to me. Maybe they're going somewhere with it. I don't know. This is, after all, a preview. Maybe they're going to be rolling in all the features that made Wonderlist great, but then again, maybe they're not. In Microsoft To-Do's current iteration, it doesn't match my needs. Since the news came out in April, I've still been using Wonderlist. Unfortunately, there is no telling when Microsoft will just up and pull the plug on it. It might be more than a year before that happens, but then again, it could be tomorrow. So I've been endeavoring to find a replacement for Wonderlist. For my needs, I need something beyond the simple shopping checklist. It needs to be able to handle multiple lists, have a way to organize those lists, and be able to share and collaborate with others on those lists. And most of all, it needs to be multi-platform meaning I need to be able to get to it from my phone and desktop. Other key features I'm looking for are uh, priority sorting, subtasks, and integration with other services. I've been testing out various services and trying different methods for task management over the last few months. I've even tried just using a simple text document to manage my tasks. Though extremely flexible, it really didn't work out very well. The good people over at Zapier have a great article called The 40 Best To-Do List Apps From 2017, From Simple Task Lists To Get Things Done. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. So I'm going to leave all the detailed review of all the different services to that article. I encourage you to go read it. It is very comprehensive. I tried many of the services and apps mentioned in that article. A few I really liked, like uh, Remember the Milk. I was actually using that service before I discovered Wonderlist. Another good one was called Asana. That is a great team to task list manager. Check that one out if you got a team. And even Microsoft To Do has possibilities, even though it's currently Wonderlist Lite. <laughs> 
There were there were a few in that list that I really didn't like, like any do. I didn't care for that one at all. Now, there was one that really intrigued me, and that was called Meister Task. But it's in a different kind of task management method, and it didn't mesh with my particular workflow. But if I ever had to manage a team project, I might revisit Meister Task. The service that I decided to move to was one that was actually recommended by a coworker. It's called Todoist. It has all the features I'm looking for. It's multi-platform and can be integrated with other services, like Google Calendar. I've been using Todoist for the last few weeks, and I really like it. Now, it did take a couple of days to get used to how it works, but since then, I've been using it daily. So, I've been transferring all my task lists from Wonderlist to Todoist, and it's been almost a seamless transition. All of Todoist's, <laughs> that's hard to say, all of Todoist's apps <laughs> work well, and there's a uniformity between them. They all look the same, and they all function the same. Now, uh, Todoist has three plans. There's free, premium, and business. Unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, <laughs> the majority of the power features that I need are only available with premium and business plans. It costs $28.99 per year for the premium plan. Now, that's a bargain for what you get, and it helps support the developers, so I don't mind paying for something I'm going to be using quite a bit. I will miss Wonderlist. I can say it's quite literally been at my side for just over half a decade. It's been a very useful assistant in keeping me organized. Todoist looks to be a good successor. So let me know what you think. What task management apps are you using? This week's Blog Oklahoma writing suggestion is to share your particular workflow. How do you get certain tasks done? I look forward to reading it. Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for WebRing membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? Then just explore the web ring and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. Just visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. There's going to be a total solar eclipse here in the United States on August 21st, 2017. Now, unfortunately, Oklahoma is not in the direct path of totality, but we will get to experience about an 85% partial eclipse. Here in Oklahoma, the eclipse will begin at 11.37 a.m. and end at 2.34 p.m., with maximum coverage at 1.05 p.m. Please remember, don't look directly at the sun unless you have properly rated eye protection. I'll share some links in the show notes with more information about this historic solar eclipse. I'm sure you've noticed I haven't put out a new episode of the podcast in a while. Back before the summer, I put the podcast on hiatus. I needed to take some time off to review and uh, recharge. As I looked back over past episodes, I really wasn't happy with how they turned out. The writing, mostly. Some episodes were better than others, but I feared I was sacrificing quality over quantity in the push to put out a weekly podcast. Those episodes where I took my time to write, I feel, turned out the best. And even the listener statistics supported this conclusion. So, I put the podcast on hold so I would have time to write. <laughs> Over the weeks since then, I've been filling up my idea bin and doing research on several topics, such as this episode about moving from Wonderlist. So, I'm happy to say the podcast is no longer on hiatus. Yay! <laughs> but eh, I still will not be returning to a weekly schedule. New episodes will be out when they're done. By not sticking with a fixed schedule, I hope to give you a better podcast. And it, um, I'll, it'll ease my mind a bit that I'll actually have time to do a good episode. Of course, though, I haven't exactly been taking it easy while I've been on this hiatus. I've taken up 
vlogging. <laughs> Please feel free to check out my new vlogs over at my personal YouTube channel. You can get there with the shortcut programwitch.com slash YouTube. That is programwitch.com slash YouTube. That'll take you straight to my personal YouTube channel. It'll give you just a tiny look at what I've been doing while I've been away from the podcast and a little bit of my everyday life. So I hope you like it. That's at programwitch.com slash YouTube. So I want to thank everyone for your patience while I took my break and for all the support you've been giving me over the years with this little hobby of mine. It means a lot. We now have a Facebook group just for the Blog Oklahoma podcast. So please join the group and discuss past and future episodes to share podcasting and writing tips, to discuss Oklahoma life and news, or just connect with your neighbors and fellow podcasters. To join, visit facebook.com slash groups slash blog Oklahoma group and click on the join group button you'll find near the top of the page. I'll also have a link to our new Facebook group in the show notes. Hope to see you there. Did you know we have our own Cafe Press store? There you could purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So just head on over to cafepress.com slash blog Oklahoma podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist on Spotify. There is now well over 24 hours of music for you to enjoy. I'll have a link to this and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. I'm happy to announce as of August 13th, 2017, Blog Oklahoma has... 718 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Hooray! Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time.